We are on part two of our new series entitled Born Identity. Let's start off and come with me to Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. Now, as you're turning there, Word Life Church was founded to encourage people to pursue the life that's found in the Word of God. And my prayer is that you and I would experience instructions from heaven today that the Holy Spirit will, 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 will speak so clearly to us that it, it prevents us from doubting or lacking or hesitating to do what God is saying to do. And I'm believing that truth will enter our hearts and freedom will be the result of it. And that can happen every time you and I yield to him. We're talking about our born identity. You have a birthright when you said yes to Jesus. And I believe the Holy Spirit wants to ignite the insight of what that birthright is on the inside of each and every one of us. Your born identity is in God. You know what? God only sees you how he created you. And when you understand that, when you begin to take your, uh, your influence, when your influence, when, when, when your acceptance comes from him and him alone, you can continue to go boldly and do what he's called you to do. Family, we get in trouble when we start looking across the aisle. We get in trouble when we start looking at other people for our approval because then we come up short. We start comparing ourselves among ourselves. We start, we start thinking, you know, uh, we start knowing ourselves by the flesh and not how God sees us. Do you understand that when you said yes to Jesus, the blood of Jesus covers you, and when God sees you, he sees Jesus. We have to settle that because all of us have faults, failures, shortcomings. Don't, don't look at me like that in that holy tone. It includes you. You have stuff that you're not proud of. You have stuff. You have regrets. You have, you have things that have gone on in your life that could hinder you from seeing yourself the way Jesus does. The purpose of this series is for you and I to, to, to get to the place where we have a lasting understanding of our true identity in him. Another reason for this series is for us to locate ourselves, to be honest enough to say, this is where I really am. Because it doesn't matter what we pretend to be. God is only going to deal with us where we really are. That's critical. I'm hoping in this series that you and I can attach our identity to the last Adam only and not the first Adam. So very important. What is your born identity? When, when we say born identity, what are we talking about? Your identity is either attached to the first Adam or it's attached to the last Adam. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Surely you've gotten there by now. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12 says, Therefore, just as through one man's sin... Through how many men? Through one man's sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to how many men? To all men, because all sin. This scripture is showing us that what Adam did affected all mankind. Are we clear on that? Now drop down to verse 15, Romans chapter 5 and verse 15. It says, but the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense, talking about Adam, many die, much more, everybody say much more, the grace of God and the gift by the grace, the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Now, this scripture is showing us that what Jesus Christ did is available to abound to as many people who desires to take hold of it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 45. I want to make a clear distinction between 
our identity choices. We will always have the opportunity to identify with the fall of Adam or the rising of Jesus. We will always have available to us a last man consciousness or a first man consciousness. A last Adam consciousness versus a first Adam consciousness. First Corinthians 15:45 says, "And so it it is written, the first man Adam became a living being. The last Adam became a life giving spirit. Now, when a person says yes to Jesus, they move from death to life. Their identity changes, and now they have a new identification. It's like when a woman gets married and she takes on her, her, her husband's name. Now she has, a, she has a new name, and with that new name comes a new identification. There's new information that there's an updated information on her, on her identification. The same is true when you and I say yes to Jesus, when you and I cross over from death to life, there is an identification that comes with us that we have to acknowledge and begin to operate from in order to get the benefits of it. This is so very important because every attack of the enemy starts with you and I not knowing who we really are. The enemy cannot attack you when you know who you are. When he comes against you and you have a firm foundation of I am in Christ Jesus, the things he does, they're, they're not effective. It's when we say, because I did this, I must be this, that the enemy says yes. See, if, you were, if, if God was all that, if you were all that, why did you do this? Some man of God, you are, look what you did, look what you said. And he begins to attack our identity, and that's how he gains ground. Family, when we settle it once and for all, I am identified with Jesus Christ. We begin to live a victorious life and move forward in the things of God. And that's my heart's cry. I am believing God that we will raise up an awareness that is so solid of you and I not being separated from Jesus. It's so easy for a believer to admire Jesus. Look what Jesus did. Oh my goodness, Jesus was awesome. Jesus, and, and there's a separation. You are awesome because Jesus is in you. You perform miracles because he went on to the Father. Everything that Jesus did, he desires for you and I to do here and now. Family, that doesn't happen if we lose our identity. And I'm telling you, from everything I've seen, from, 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 from traveling and being around different churches and, 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 and watching Christians interact, there is a huge identity crisis going on in the body of Christ. And I'm believing God that this series will get you and I so focused on who we are that there's no difference between us and Jesus. What an awesome opportunity that you and I have to go forth and begin to produce the fruit of manifestation that comes from heaven. It's important. If the enemy of your soul can get you to stay in the natural, he wins every single time. Look at your neighbor and say, your victory is in the spirit. Did everybody have a neighbor? Everybody have a neighbor? Find, find a neighbor. Say that again. Your victory is in the spirit. It's not in the first Adam. Your born identity is so important because it gives you insight into the kingdom of God. John 3.3 3 talks about uh, unless one's born again, we can't see the kingdom of God. We, we need to see God's way of doing things. We need to see the difference between how will God handle this versus our natural man. You know, um, the kingdom of God has been available and is always available waiting for children of God to access heaven and bring it to earth. It's always available. But what are we going to do? I'm reminded of 
Uh, we had a, a restaurant owner come and visit us. I don't know how many uh, months ago it was now, but Terrell and I recently went and had dinner at her restaurant, and she reminded us, she said she came up for prayer, and she was dealing with uh, some pain in her wrist. She, couldn't, she didn't have use, full use of her, of her hand. And uh, she came up for prayer, and Terrell spoke a word and said, you need to forgive. I think it was you or me, one of us. One of us, one of us said, uh, you need to forgive. And so the manifestation of the kingdom of God showed up in her life and the pain left the moment she said, I forgive. That is how we have to live our lives. We weren't, we weren't even thinking about that prayer, that terror. We, we were going to go enjoy a, a dinner, but it was so refreshing to be reminded of God's goodness. Family, it's available. And if you have pain in your body, it's trespassing. If you said yes to Jesus, if you have sorrow, fear, doubt, anxiety, it's trespassing. Your body belongs to the Holy Spirit. And you and I need to identify with who we are in him and not allow the stuff on the outside to keep hindering God's perfect plan for the earth. Manifestation come in Jesus' name. I am believing that we get revelation knowledge, we get supernatural insight, and we understand that, that Jesus has imparted keys into our lives so that you and I can begin to do transactions from heaven to earth we have to grab hold of this family don't allow yourself to 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 settle into i'm only human don't allow yourself to settle in to that's for the preacher to do that's for the, the the teacher to do that's for the apostle the prophet to do family it is up to you to manifest heaven on earth look at your neighbor and say it's up to you Our born-again identity is the root of our belief system. You don't have to do something to be something. I I used the example of our our dog, Bane, (laughs) last last week. And and I said, uh, it doesn't matter if if we teach. We probably could teach Bane how to meow, but I'm not going to. if, if, If we taught Bane how to meow, it's not going to change who he is. It is just as silly for you and I to think that we have to do something in order to be something. That is out of order. We are human beings, not human doings. When once we get a real understanding of who we be, no, that's not good English. Once, once we get a real understanding of who we be, What we do becomes an overflow of that. That's why this is one of the greatest opportunities for you and I to grab hold of who we really are in him. Because family, the lack of knowledge of this subject prevents us from moving and doing what God has called us to do. Every time, everything you do should be out of who you are. You know what that means? That means you should never hesitate to lay hands on somebody. You should never hesitate to speak a powerful declaration over a situation because it has to bow down to you because greater is he that is in you. The moment you said yes to Jesus, you attach your life to Jesus and you have, you have the ability to speak life just like your daddy. God spoke everything we see in existence. And family, you and I can speak things into existence because we are created in his image and his likeness. Every time you begin to hesitate, all you're doing is mistaking your identity. Every time you you hesitate to say, what if it doesn't happen? You're looking at you and not him. 
We, we, we have to grab hold of our born identity because it's full of power. It's full of victory. It's full of, it's full of life. You're successful because who's in you? Don't separate the God in you from the vessel, the tool that he's using. Amen? Don't do that. Don't allow that to happen because that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants us, he wants us to look at ourselves. You know, we are new created beings. We are species that have never existed before. The moment we said yes to Jesus, there was a new creation that took place. The, 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 the problem with not understanding our born-again identity is if we don't understand what took place, we'll look in the mirror and say, oh man, God failed. <laughs> this, this can't be God. I don't look like God. I don't sound like God. I don't feel like God. If we limit what the Word of God says to what we see in the mirror based on us, we'll get it twisted. We have to get, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14. Family, the identity that came with your decision to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior came with abundant life. Look at someone and say, you are the, you are the holder of abundant life. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and, and verse 14, it says, For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. Then it goes on to say, And he died for all, that those who live should li live no longer for themselves. Now, the moment you and I said yes to Jesus, is the moment we should choose to stop living for ourselves. Instead, look what it says, but for him who died for them and rose again. You know what's so powerful about that? Because, raise your hand if you believe Jesus rose from the grave. Raise your hand if you believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Those of you online, I can't see you, but I'm believing you raising your hand with us. That understanding has to be attached to I rose again. Raise your hand if you believe you rose from the dead. Family, that has to be attached. We cannot say Jesus rose from the dead and I'm still the old man struggling trying to get by. Because he died, we died. When he rose, we rose. Verse 16, family, Jesus died for you so that you could live with him. You are a co-labor of Jesus Christ. You're doing it with him. Your identity is attached to Jesus, the last Adam. Verse 16 says, therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him. You know, it's so important that we stop knowing ourselves after the flesh. When we begin to know ourselves according to the Spirit, we begin to walk in victory constantly. It's when you and I attach ourselves to our flesh and begin to know ourselves, begin to identify ourselves, begin to punish ourselves, be, begin to hold our standards according to the flesh, we hinder what God wants to do. It, said, it says account no one. No, it says no, no one according to the flesh. Look at your neighbor and say, don't know yourself according to the flesh. Don't know yourself according to the flesh. Know yourself in him. Allow him to live and move and have his being in your life. Verse 17 says, therefore, if anyone is in, what's it say? He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, if you understand who you are in Christ, you will walk in new 
creation realities. You will do things different. You will operate, you will flow differently. And that's so important that we get to that point. We need revelation knowledge to receive kingdom instructions. And, and that's the center of my, my prayer for this series, for you and I to receive kingdom instructions. When we get our instructions from the king, we can rule and reign with him and take care of kingdom business here on the earth. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for insight, revelation, wisdom, and understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13. I'm going to read through 19. It says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? You know, that's such a great question. Who do, who do men say that Jesus is? You know, the better question is, who do you say that Jesus is in your life? Who do you say Jesus is. Is, is. is he your healer? Is he your savior? We have to get to the point where we know that we know that he is in us, he is for us, and he's going to take care of whatever is going on. It's not enough to know him as your, your healer, not your financier. It's not enough to know them as your, as your Savior and not your Lord. You know, the powerful thing about having a, 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 a you know, I like the example of if you have a, a landlord, the problems that go on in the apartment, they're not yours. They're not as big. You know, it's like if you live in an apartment and the washer goes, goes out, you're not wringing your hands, you're not freaking out, you're not getting the, the uh, y'all remember the, the clotheslines outside? You're not, you're, not, you're not breaking out the clothesline. You know why? Because it's the landlord's responsibility. When we allow Jesus to be our Lord, we don't freak out when things go on in our lives. We say, Lord, your car broke down. Lord, your, your, your washer went out again. Lord, you got, Lord, you got to fix this. That's the difference between him just being your Savior and him being your Lord. Lord, I need you to help me figure this out. Lord, I need you to come alongside of me. I need your comfort. I need your strength. That's dependency on our Lord. Who do you say that he is? Who is he to you? Family, we, we, we really need to settle that once and for all. Verse 14 says, so they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and the other is Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Verse 15, he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Who gave him the revelation? Who gave him the revelation? The Father who is in heaven. Verse 18 says, And I also say to you, that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. I will build my church. He will build the church of Jesus Christ by revelation knowledge. The only way God's church gets built is going to be revelation knowledge. Family, we cannot do what he, we cannot continue the work of the Messiah without the help of Father God revealing to us what to do and what not to do. 
You know, what you are a part of is a supernatural entity. You are a part of the body of Christ. You know, a lot of people get in trouble looking at the body and, and neglecting the head and judging the head according to the body. You know why that's so dangerous? The head is always leadership. The head is always making the decisions. The head is always going to go to where the head is supposed to go. And you and I have been guilty of looking at the body and judging the head based on the body. Throwing out the head because of a bad pinky. Looking at somebody across the way and say, how could they do that? How could they say that? Look, I'm out of here. I'm not going to be a part of this. I'm not going to be a part of this because of this, because of a toe. What about the head? What about your Lord? What about your Savior? What about the one that died for you? What about the one that saved you and set you free? What about the one that delivered you? Get that old crusty toe. Focus on the head. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Every one of us has had an awesome opportunity to be offended at somebody in the church. Some, one of the members of the body. Not the head. Y'all better help me. True or not true? True or not true? Don't leave me, Hey, I know, I'm, I know I'm not up here by myself. How many times have we allowed the body to hinder our focus on the head. Here's, here's the greatest advice I can give all of us. Identify with the head. Identify with the head. Verse 18. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Verse 19 says, and I will give you the keys of of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Is Jesus still holding the keys? Family. You know what's so powerful about this, 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 this text? It shows us revelation, impartation, and manifestation. It shows us the Father revealing. It shows Jesus imparting. And then it shows manifestation because who, who, who does the, 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 the binding? Who does the binding and loosing? We do. That's manifestation. So the manifestation is in your hands. You know why? Because you are in him and he is in you. What you bind, what you lose is what it's going to be. Your Father God who is in heaven desires to reveal something to you. Revelation will position you and I to receive the keys. And those keys will allow us to make transactions between heaven and earth. My God. It is time to make transactions between heaven and earth you know i made a statement last week and i said don't identify with something like this i'm paraphrasing don't identify with politicians who lie for a living and not identify with god who cannot lie. Right. Cannot. Right. Doesn't it make, family, please hear my heart. Doesn't it make sense for you and I to identify with the only one that has never lied to us? Right. Doesn't that make sense? Yes. We have to understand where our identity comes from. I believe that this revelation is the key to living a victorious Christian life. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. 
We are tripart beings. This is where a lot of the confusion comes from, not understanding. It's our spirit man that has been completed, the completed work. The, the finished work of the cross has already taken care of our spirit man. One third of you is absolutely, completely whole, done, complete. Your body, mm. your mind, well. But, but one third of you is good. One third of you has been completed. We are tripart beings, spirit, soul, and body. We are spirit beings. We live in a physical body and we possess a soul. Our soul is comprised of our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect, and our imagination. Every born again believer has undergone a complete spiritual transformation. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, read it with me, soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, have passed away. Have, is, it, is it passing away? Is it going on? No, it has, past tense, it has passed away. Behold, or look at here, or be held by this statement, all things have become new. Family, you are a new creation. The you we're talking about is your spirit man. You are a new creation. The verse declares that old things have already passed away. If you don't understand this, it'll get you in trouble every single time. Because if you think, you know, you get born again and all things become new, including your mind and your body, you'll be very disappointed when you look in the mirror and you weigh the exact same thing. You'll be very disappointed when you think all things that have become new and you still have those thoughts that you have to cast down. Now, wouldn't it be cool if, if when you got born again, you just lost all the weight you wanted to lose? Wouldn't that be cool? You know what? I'd, I'd have a TV program. <laughs> it'd, be like, it'd be like, it'd be like sal, 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 salvation, a salvation diet. I, I, would, I would have a standing room only. Only if it was, that, it was that easy. Can you imagine a salvation diet, Bibles and barbells with, with, <laughs> with, with Pastor Freddie? No, it, 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 that part still needs to be taken care of, true or not true. On a serious note, although Christ's atonement provided for you physically, your body has yet to be saved. We need to understand this because it will prevent confusion and frustration. If you think the word says all things are passed away, I should be good. I shouldn't be struggling with this. I shouldn't be going through this. I should, be, I, I should already have that. This understanding prevents you and I from getting frustrated, confused, and allowing the enemy to steal away what God is doing on the inside of us. When you accept Jesus, your soul was not saved. It would be nice if two-thirds of us was taken care of, but it's one-third of us that has already been taken care of. Our soul still needs to be dealt with. Your soul, your mind, and we could all acknowledge this, our mind needs to be dealt with, true or not true. Your emotions need to be dealt with, true or not true. Absolutely, your imagination still needs to be met with. True or not true? Absolutely. This is where our personality comes from, but God is after our personalities. He is after our identity. He is after our minds. That's why he tells us to renew our minds. He wants our soul to be saved. He wants our soul to come into union with our spirit man. This will happen and is happening, but it's not automatic. Old things didn't pass away in your soul. 
And it's important that we know that because it allows, you know what the devil wants to do? The devil wants to get you and I to get to the point where we get frustrated and think this don't work. The word says all things have passed away. Why am I going through this? Why am I struggling with this? Why, why is this going on in my life? And if he can get you to agree with, with him, he can prevent you and I from moving in the direction that God has for us. The all things becoming new didn't happen in your body or in your soul, but in your born again spirit, in your identity. Your spirit totally changed at salvation upon you and I making Jesus Christ our Lord. Your spirit, what part of you? Underwent total transformation. Very, very important. Now, the reason why I wanted to take time to just to, to spend on that a little bit because once we get that settled, we can move forward in the things of God. Once we get that settled, we can, we can, we can stop questioning the word of God. When, we, when it's clear what takes place, I am a spirit. Say that with me. I am a spirit. You know what's so powerful about that? So is God. The only way you and I interact with God is in the spirit. That's the only way. The only way we really worship him is in the spirit. The only way that you and I have intimacy with Jesus is in the spirit. He's not dealing with the rest of us. How do we do this? How do we walk in our born identity? Grab your, 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 your notes Go to the application piece. Let's look at this together. How do we do this? How do we walk in this? It's, 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 it's good to know what our born identity is. It's, it's good to know why we need to walk in it. But how? How do we do this? How, how do we be successful in walking in our born identity? Number one says what? Embrace the truth. Family, your spirit has totally changed. You aren't in process of getting something from God in your spirit. Your spirit is not going to be different once you are in glory. Your spirit is just as redeemed as Jesus himself. Embrace that truth. Embrace that truth. Your spirit is perfect. Say, wow. Look at somebody and say, wow, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a part of you that's perfect. There's a part of you. Say, say, look at somebody and say, God looks good in you. Your spirit right now is as perfect, mature, and complete as Jesus himself. That's why you're expected to do greater works, according to John 14, 12. Number two says what? Deny deception. And this is a hard one. I, I struggle with writing that down because I've never met someone who was deceived that knew it. You ever think about that? I, no one ever says, you know what, I'm deceived. And I believe no one who is in deception know they're in deception. <laughs> Don't allow thoughts like I become a brand new creation. Why isn't it working for me? Don't, don't allow, this is how you deny deception. Don't allow thoughts to come in unchecked. Like maybe I did too much and it doesn't work for me. Maybe I'm too far gone. Maybe my sin is greater than God's hand. Don't allow the enemy to start building a case in your mind and then you agree to it. You know, don't allow things like, well, I'm still the same. You know, I'm born again, but I'm still the same. It, 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 must, it, it couldn't have worked. Maybe it, maybe it didn't take. <laughs> maybe, maybe I did it wrong. Don't allow the enemy to start lying to you like that. Number three says what? 
Allow the word to shape your soul. This is probably the greatest need in the body of Christ, in my opinion. Family. You know, the greatest uh, tool the enemy uses against the body of Christ is preventing us from getting in the word. It's a sleep remedy. Pick your Bible up. (laughs) Or we don't prioritize it. Here's the thing. The only way to shape your soul comes from the word of God. You know, there, there is even an attack all the way on the other side that says, you know, it doesn't take all that. Come on, man. You got to read every day? It don't take all that. You know, it don't, you don't have to pray and read it? Man, no, not today. Not enough. You know, contemporarily, you don't have to go through all of that stuff. You know, that, that, was, that was for back then. Dear God, what a lie. Family, how much more do we need to be in the word of God? Am I telling the truth? Family, whatever you do, commit to the word of God so it can shape your soul. Your soul can only be transformed to the degree that you renew your mind and conform your values to the word of God. Your identity should come out of the word. Who you are, what you do should be based on on the word of God. That takes great intentionality. Is that a word? Intentionality? Is that a word? Any English teachers in here? I'm good. I'm good. (laughs) You you, you have to do that on purpose. That is, that is, that's not just going to happen. You have to be very intentional in doing that. Romans 12, 1 and 2 is a proof text to that, that statement. It's the only, in fact, let's go there. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. 1 and 2. Let's read the proof text to that statement. Let's read that together. Ready? Read. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It takes you and I attaching our lives to the word of God and allowing it to shape our souls. Number four. Okay, I'm going to give you all another chance. We good? We good? Number four, ready, read. Commit to living your life from God, not for God. The proof text of that statement is in Galatians chapter 2, verse 19 and 20. I, did I give you all the message version? Let's, let's read that in the message. Um, I really, 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 really in, in enjoy this translation of Galatians chapter 2, 19 and 20. You guys have that media team? Let's read this together. Commit to living your life from God, not for God. Because he's in you, and you want what's coming through you to be of him. You don't don't want to be caught up doing something for God all the time. I'm doing something for God, doing something for God. No, you want to do what you do from God, from his perspective. Ready, read. What actually took place is this. I tried keeping rules and working my head off to please God, and it didn't work. So I quit being a lawman, God man. I'll stop right there. Um, Christ's life, his life, his example showed me and enabled me to do it. Now, look at the the next part. 
I identified myself completely with him. Completely. Not with my background, my upbringing, the side of the track I grew up on. I identified myself completely with who? With him. Family, this is our way out. This is our way to victory. This is, this is how we commit to our identification being in him. Because there will always be a reason to disagree with somebody. There will always be something else that's different. There will always be something that you can disagree with with somebody else. It's when you and I identify ourselves with him, we become united. That's when we become a member of the body. Identified with him. Let's read on. Indeed, I have been crucified with Christ. My ego is no longer central. It is no longer important that I appear righteous before you and have your good opinion And I am no longer driven to impress God. Christ lives in me. The life you see me living is not mine, but it is lived by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I'm not going back on that. How powerful. How about we choose to not go back on that? If we just say, you know what, I'm going to identify myself with him completely. I'm going to allow my life to be a light. I'm going to live my life from from his perspective and go forward. Don't live less than God's best. When I was preparing this message, I heard the Lord say, let your spoken faith change the air. The atmosphere has drawn me here. Declare victory, peace, hope, and life. There's power in your decree to eliminate strife. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for watching over your word to perform it. Thank you for grace deposits and truth impartation. Father, we choose to be identified with you over and above our priority is to live this life representing you as an ambassador of heaven. We thank you for your word, the infallible, incorruptible seed of God. I pray that it goes into the hearts of these, your children, men and women of God, who have chosen to give you access to their innermost being. Let the seed of your word grab hold and begin to produce roots that begin to grow and produce fruit. That there will be a harvest of the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Truth wisdom and revelation father show us how to apply this word in our lives I pray that boldness will arise in our midst I pray that we begin to step out of our comfort zones and initiate manifestations of heaven I boldly declare a release of faith in this place like never before. I thank you for the supernatural outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Causing the word to burn in our hearts. Father, thank you for teaching us by your Spirit. Thank you for your divine power that has been given to all of us. concerning life and godliness thank you for insight thank you for revelation impartation and manifestation thank you for calling us into your glory your virtue thank you Lord. we believe you 
we trust you. And we give you our innermost beings right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God.
have them to say, what, what are you saying? Mighty name of Jesus, we give you all the praise, glory. 